For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or support me at patreon.com forward slash Daxter Bells. All right, guys, let's do this problem where they want you to find the tension developing in each cable in order to hold this 20 kilogram street light, knowing that H, which is the height of A, is equal to 3.5 meters. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to find the univectors. Find univectors. The univectors are four. You got the univector going towards C, towards D, towards B, and the one going straight down towards a street light. To find these univectors, you need to find all the points involved, points A, B, C, and D. So A sits at 0 on the I, plus 0 on the J, plus H, which is 3.5 in the K. B is at, sorry, that's 3 in the I, plus 4 in the J, plus 4 in the K. C, it's at negative 6 in the I, minus 3 in the J, plus 6 in the K. And D is at 4 in the I, minus 3 in the J, plus 4 in the K. So to find univector AB, first you need to find the vector that goes from A to B, which is equal to B minus A. And it's 3 in the I, plus 4 in the J, plus 0.5 in the K. The magnitude of this vector is found by doing the X component square plus the Y component square plus the C component square and comes out to be exactly 5.02. And the univector AB is found by dividing the vector AB by its magnitude and it is equal to 0.597 in the I plus 0.796 in the J, plus 0.1 in the K. So now you need to find, do go through the same motions and find univector AC and univector AD. And when you go through the same motions, you find AC and find the magnitude, divide by magnitude, etc., etc., you basically do these three steps for the other two. You get that univector AC comes out to be negative point. 838 in the I minus 0 0.419 in the J plus 0.349 in the K. And AD comes out to be 0 0.796 in the I minus 0 0.597 in the J plus 0.1 in the K. The last univector you need to find is the univector uh, holding the weight of the light, which is going straight down in the C axis, which is minus 1 in the K. So now that you find all the univectors, hopefully you, you've been taking notes. With all these univectors, uh, the second thing that you need to do is you need to multiply them. By the tensions slash forces. In this case, they're all tensions. So we got four tensions. The tension going towards C, the tension going towards C, the tension going towards B, and the tension going straight down, holding the weight. So tension in AB, tension in AC, tension in AD, and the tension holding the light, which is the weight of the light. The weight of the light is 20 kilograms, I mean the mass of the light is 20 kilograms, so the weight is 20 times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81, and it comes out to be 196.2 newtons. Each of these uh, forces and tensions, you got to multiply by, respect, by its respective univectors. So this is times univector AB, times univector AC, times univector AD and times the univector for the weight. All these are the univectors which is found on the previous page. When you do, this is the equations that you get. You get basically the Cartesian uh, vector form of each of these uh, forces, which comes out to be 0 0.597 tension AB in the I plus 0 0.796 
tension AV and the J plus 0.1 tension AV and the K minus 0.838 tension AC and the I minus 0.419 tension AC in the J plus 0.349 tension AC in the K this is 0.796 tension AD in the I minus 0.597 tension AD in the J plus 0.1 tension AD in the K and this is 0 in the I 0 in the J and minus the weight in the K the weight being 196.2 newtons and you know that we're in equilibrium so the sum of all this is 0 on the I, 0 on the J and 0 in the K so just by looking at this table you can form your three equations I J K so by adding the I's which is 0.597 tension AB in the I minus 0.838 tension AC in the I also you don't write the I's plus 0.796 tension AD plus 0 is equal to 0 for the second one 0.796 tension AB minus 0.419 tension AC minus 0.597 tension AD is equal to 0 the last one is 0.1 tension AB plus 0.349 tension AC plus 0.1 tension AD is equal to the weight which is 196.2 newtons so we have our three equations now that we have our, our system of equations all we gotta do is solve it with some algebra so if you can solve it by yourself you can stop the video right now if you wanna see how I solve it just stick around the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace tension AB for X, tension AC for Y, and tension AD for C just to make it more eye appealing. And I'm going to use the method of <coughs> matrices. Some of you criticize me for using this method so often, but it's the one, the one I like. Use the one you like if you have a better way of doing it but I like this, this is very systematical for me so to use the method of matrices the first thing you need to do is find the determinant of the system to find the determinant you need to get all the coefficients on the left side of the three equations and build a matrix from them so the main determinant you need to build a matrix <coughs> let me try to be as neat as I can with my bamboo tablet 0 0.597, 0 0.796, 0 0.1, negative 0.838, negative 0 0.419, 0 0.349, and this is 0 0.796, negative 0 0.597, and 0 0.1. So basically, what I did is I got all the coefficients all the coefficients here on the left side of the equal signs and I build a matrix from them and now you need to find the determinant which is very easy to do you have your the first thing that you need to do is you need to rewrite the first and second column 0 0.597, 0 0.796, 0 0.1, minus 0 0.838, minus 0 0.419, 
and 0.349. You need to do your positive diagonals. Basically, you're going to multiply the values on these diagonals and add them together. And then you do your negative diagonals in which you subtract the product of these uh, three, the three values on each of these diagonals and you add them with the positive diagonals. When you add all those values together, you get that this is equal to 0.471. So to recap, this is what you do. 0.597 times negative 0.419 times 0.1 plus negative 0.838 times negative 0.597 times 0.1 plus 0.796 times 0.796 times 0.349 minus 0.1 times negative 0.419 times 0.796 minus 0.349 times negative 0.597 times 0.597 <clears throat> minus 0.1 times 0.796 times negative 0.838 so that's basically what, what you what you're going to be doing for these values and when you add and subtract once you have to subtract all of them together you get that the main determinant is 0 0.471 so then you need to find the determinant of each of the of the uh, variables so to find the determinant of x the values on the right side of the equations which are 0 0 and 196.2 you need to replace it on the first column for the x on the second column for the y and on the third column for the c so this will be 0 0 196.2 and then the values remain the same the rest of the values 0.838 negative 0 0.419, 0 0.349, 0 0.796, negative 0 0.597, and 0 0.1. And when you go through the same motions that I went above, you get that the determinant of x comes out to be 163.6. Then you do the determinant of y. Let me build the matrices. At least you can check your work with mine. 0 0.597, 0 0.796, 0 0.1. And the values in the middle you replace for 0, 0, and 196.2. And the rest remain the same. 0 0.796, negative 0 0.597, and 0 0.1. Since there are zeros on this one, they're much easier to solve because there's only two diagonals that actually have values, the rest are zero. The determinant of y comes out to be 196.2. And when you find the determinant of c, remember, the rest of the values are the same. 0 0.796, 0 0.1, negative 0 0.838, negative 0 0.419, 0 0.349, and the last column is 0, 0, 196.2. And the determinant comes out to be 81.8 for me. Once that you have all the determinants, then the problem becomes cake. x is equal to the determinant of x over the main determinant. y is equal to the determinant of y over the main determinant. And c is equal to the determinant of c over the main determinant and when you do those values uh, you get that x is equal to 347.3 newtons y is equal to 412.4 newtons and c is equal to 173.7 newtons final answer final answer final answer those are the way i do it you can probably find an easier way to solve those system of equations. I like use, using matrices because no matter how hard those numbers get, the matrices should always give you the right answer and the matrices are actually easier to go and check if you made a mistake because usually the mistakes that you make are not logic mistakes, are more like copying mistakes. That's why I like matrices more. So final answer for these three, hopefully you like my method. Please comment below if you want me to do any problems and I'll be happy to help.
Thank you.